we have seen how we can analyze a nonlinear system by linearizing it and analyzing its linearization. But what does this information about the linearized system tell us about the nonlinear system? Fortunately, a lot, as you will learn in this video, where we will see that linear information about equilibrium points also holds for the nonlinear system in almost all cases. So what's going on? Uh, if we have our locally linear system, so we rewrite the DDT of u equals Jacobi matrix times u. Then we also have some remainder, r1, r2. And if this remainder is small enough, then the system is called locally linear. Small enough means that we will see that later, but that's almost always fine. So almost always we have a locally linear system. So what do we know then? Well, if our system is locally linear, that means it our, implies that our equilibrium points uh, behave in the nonlinear problem the same as in the linear problem. So what happens nonlinearly, we can see this, we can learn this by analyzing what happens linearly. So if we are, for example, going into an equilibrium point linearly, we will also go in the corresponding nonlinear system into the equilibrium point. If we go out linearly, then in the nonlinear system, we we'll also go out linearly. And combining the two, if you have a saddle point in the linear system, we will have a saddle point in the nonlinear one. And if you are spiraling about a point uh, linearly, then nonlinearly, so more or less the same happens again around our equilibrium point, and we will also be spiraling. You can see this why this is from the uh, eigenvalues. Suppose we have, say, two eigenvalues which are real here and here, and uh, not, the, not the same sign. If we now uh, uh, perturb them slightly, if we perturb our quadratic equation slightly, they will remain real. They may shift a bit on the real axis, but they will remain plus and minus. So we will still have a settle point. If we have two real and positive eigenvalues, perturb them again slightly, they may shift a bit, but they will stay, they will remain real and positive. And uh, for spiral points, so two eigenvalues which are each other's complex conjugate, so we can perturb a bit, perturbing means that we will slightly shift their positions, that means that if we have a spiral point they will remain uh, with a non-zero imaginary part, so we will still have spiral points and they will still be in this case with negative real part. Now what are the exceptions? When is something going to happen? Well if we have two eigenvalues which are exactly imaginary, the green ones over here. Now uh, let's see what is going to happen if we perturb them a bit, little bit. Well with the two green ones they are going to shift slightly but they can shift to the right, to the left, so they can become uh, spiral points, sort of which are stable or unstable, or maybe they stay on the axis. Anyhow, you don't know exactly what's going to happen. So if you have a center, so complex eigenvalues with zero real part, if you have a center linearly, you do not know what's going to happen non-linearly. Something similar happens if you have uh, two eigenvalues which are real and which are the same. Again, if you going to perturb them, they can stay on the real axis or they can uh, go into the complex plane. So also in that case, two real eigenvalues which are the same uh, linearly and you also don't know what's going to happen non-linearly. So we can summarize this picture here. So if you have linearly an attractor, we have one non-linear, repeller same, saddle the same, for stable or unstable spiral, the non-linear story and the linear story are the same. But only if you have a center in the linear case, we do not know what happens in the nonlinear case. So fortunately, the linearized systems around all the equilibrium points give us a lot of information about the nonlinear system. Only if you happen to have a center, double eigenvalue, then we do not know what's going on linearly. But all the other cases, we are fine.